a pleasant day to everyone. This is now the part 2 of the lesson 4 on the introduction to criminology focuses on the criminal law, its theory and characteristics. Okay, once more, this is Dr. Ariel D. Manluzok, the director of the ADMRC Review Center and uh, the college dean. Let's begin with the theory of criminal law. Basically, compared to the uh, criminology theory, in the theory of criminal law, it is almost the same with the first part, which is the classical theory. And when we talk about the classical theory of criminal law, it is focused on the fact that men have the free will, that all human beings are rational creation, therefore they know what is right from what is wrong. Thus, the purpose of giving punishment is primarily as a form of retribution, meaning this is the reaction of the society towards people who commit the crime. So they commit the crime, they need to be punished because that serves justice to the community as a form of social vengeance. On the other hand, the concept of punishment of the classical is also no, focused on the concept of deterrence as uh, emphasized by Jeremy Bentham which is the concept that we give punishment for two purposes. One, as a general deterrence so that other people in the society will not commit the same offense as the one already punished. And the second is a specific deterrence so that the one who is actually punished will not commit the same offense at all because he will be punished for purposes of letting him realize the consequences of committing a crime against the society. Now, in the classical theory of criminal law, the principle of pen penalty is very simple. For every crime, there is a proportionate penalty. No? That's why it was written in the book of Caesar Beccaria, the principle of certainty of punishment, which is written in the book on crimes and punishment. The only thing that is not so good about the classical is there is a scant regard to human element. What does it mean? It does not consider other factors that affects the free will of men. It looks upon all men as rational beings. And based on our analysis of our criminal law, you know, the revised penal code of the Philippines, Majority of the provision is actually patterned from the classical theory. Why? Because for every crime that we have in the revise, there is a specific penalty or there are penalties that are set by the code. On the other hand, we also have the positivist theory. Now, you will notice in criminological theory, after the classical school, we have the neoclassical. But in criminal law theory, after the classical, we immediately jump to the positivist theory. So what is now the difference? In the positivist theory of criminal law, they look upon people holistically. What does it mean? Okay, It means that they look not just on the human being as a rational creation, but they considered factors, internal and external, that affects man's behavior, such as social, economic, biological, psychological, and other natural factors. Now, since they look at criminal, some of them as someone who suffer from certain ailment or someone who has deficiencies, okay, they look upon punishment not really as a form of punishment, but as a form of prevention, correction, reformation, more specifically, and treatment. Why? Because they believe in the positivist criminal law that these people need reformation and treatment so that when they reintegrated to the community, they became a well-abiding or well-rounded and law-abiding citizen. Now, what about the principle of penalty? 
considered human nature. That's the good thing about positivists. They considered other factors that attaches to human nature, such as the limitation that may that a persons may have. Ano po yon? Tulad ng mga taong may insanity, may mga sakit sa mental conditions like uh, people who are lunatics. Okay, psychotic, they are given considerations by the law. And on the other hand, those people who commit a crime, although it is not actually accomplished, there's also a penalty provided because they look upon other circumstances such as the evil intent of the person to commit a crime even though he did not accomplish the crime. And much greater is they added some emphasis to criminals who are habitual, meaning paulit-ulit no, sa paggawa ng krimen. It gives an additional okay, penalty which means it is for the purposes of giving punishment now as a form of deterrence somehow. Now, our revised penal code also provides for the positivist jury, meron din po siyang influence. Why? Because we have justifying which exempt the persons from any criminal or civil liability. There is exempting which although we said there is a crime, but by reason of absence of one or two elements of felony, the person can be excused. And that's one contribution of the positivist, including now the mitigating which lowers the penalty or the opposite aggravating which might increases the penalty due to some okay circumstances okay but what is the totality of our criminal law our criminal law is actually more of the eclectic or known as mixture why because it is the mixture of the classical and the positivist jury. Okay? So that's for the jury of criminal law. Now let's move on to the more important topic, which is the characteristics of the criminal law. Now, in criminal law, in law subject, normally we only discuss three. What are these three subjects that we discuss? The generality, the territoriality, and the prospectivity. But in Introduction to Criminology, we enumerated six characteristics of what a criminal law is. One is generality, that criminal law applies to all. Two, territoriality, that the criminal law of the Philippines is enforceable as a general rule within the Philippine territory. Number three is prospective or irretrospectivity, that the law must be forward and not backward, meaning we can only enforce the law to those acts which are done only after the law is made effective. The fourth one, which is not usually discussed in the law proper, is the concept of specific and definite. Now, why criminal law is specific and definite? Because obviously, when you study specific crimes, you will learn that every crimes have their own specific elements. The absence of one means that that acts or commissions may not fall on that particular crime, which only means to say a different provision of the law has been violated. That's the concept of being specific and definite. Okay, and if you notice in our criminal law, crimes are classified. No, they are classified depending on their nature. There is a crimes against property. There is a crimes against person. There is crimes against chastity. Now, why? Because they have some common element, but they have specific and definite elements that is only provided for such provision or such felony or crime. Okay. And there is a definite punishment. The fifth is uniform in application. Why? Because regardless of your status as a general rule, the criminal law must be applied no, in the same way and in the same manner to all, regardless of age, gender, and others. Although we know that there are some exemptions to the rule. 
Okay, that is because it was brought about by the positivist theory. And lastly, but very important, that the criminal law is criminal law, not because it is just promulgated by the duly constituted authority, but there is a sanction, a penalty or a penal sanction or other term is punishment. Although we know there is a little difference between penalty and punishment because punishment is generic. Penalty is more of legal and specific application. So these are the six general characteristics of what a criminal law is in introduction to criminology. Now let's discuss them one at a time and let's have a little example of each. Let's begin with generality. The rule is very simple. The criminal law is binding upon all persons who live or sojourn in the Philippine archipelago, regardless of sex, race, nationality, and other personal circumstances. That's the general rule. In Tagalog, okay, ang ating criminal law ay, no, pwedeng i-apply sa lahat. Lahat ng tao na naninirahan o nandito sa Pilipinas. No, hindi natin kinoconsidered kung siya ay galing sa ibang bansa o kung siya ay ibang nationalismo o kung anong race ang kanyang pinagmulan. Ang mahalaga rito, nandito siya sa Pilipinas, siya ay what? Sakop ng batas ng criminal law ng Pilipinas. Okay. But we know that uh, there are exemptions to the rule. But to give an example first of the general rule, this is the example. Peter Pan is a British citizen. He went to the Philippines and committed shoplifting. So, he committed ng shoplifting. In the legal terms, that will be theft. Okay? Is the criminal law applicable to him? Answer. Following the general rule, he is a tourist. Correct. But, he is in the Philippines and he violated the law of the Philippines. So, what will be our answer? Answer is very simple. Yes, for he committed the crime in the Philippines. Even though he is a foreigner, then the criminal law of the Philippines applies to him. That is simply the generality rule. Talk about the exemptions. This is the beauty of law. There is a general rule and there are exemptions to the general rule. And exemptions means many. One of them is treaty stipulation or sa Tagalog, kasunduan sa pagitan ng mga bansa o ng bansa tulad ng Philippines and U.S. military exercises. That's an example of treaty. Two, public international law. Mga taong binigyan ng proteksyon sangayon sa pagka... What? sa nakasaad okay o na pagkasunduan sa international agreement or international organization no, tulad ng United Nation example alam natin na ang bawat bansa ay independent sa bawat isa kaya naman ang head ng states tulad ng pangulo or presidente ambassadors no not head of state yan that's another one a king, queen, yes, the pope in the Vatican, the sultan in some Islamic country, the supreme ruler, okay, and emperor or empress or the prime minister in some country. They are head of states. Therefore, if they commit a crime in another country, they may not be prosecuted for a crime because simply each country is sovereign, okay. Second is ambassador. Sila po yung diplomatic representative ng bansa sa kaibigang bansa. So if ambassador of US went to Philippines and he committed a crime, he cannot be prosecuted in the Philippines because of public international law. The same with ministry. Ministry is the old term for now we called as department. The head of ministry is called minister. In the Philippines, we change that to department, and the head of the department is called secretary. So our secretary works as the alter ego of the president. So they can be blessed by the privilege that the president has. And other ministers, like charges the affairs and ministry of plenipotentiary, or ministers of plenipotentiary. Now, question. Sir, are consul included in those who are exempted? Answer, no. 
Why? Because consul is not a diplomatic representative politically. He's more a commercial representative. But a consul who committed a violation of his duty can be charged, not here, but in the country that he is representing. Okay. Number three is the law of preferential application. No mga batas na nagbibigay ng privilegio o protection sa ilang pagkakataon o tao. Ang halimbawa po nito ay dalawa sa ating konstitusyon at sa isang special law. Ang parliamentary immunity at ang Republic Act 75. Ano po yung parliamentary immunity? Ito po yung malinaw na nakasaad sa konstitusyon. Hindi natin pwedeng kasuhan ng congressman o senador kapag sila ay nagbibigay ng privileged speeches. Kahit na ito ay may mga panirang pananalita, hindi natin sila pwedeng kasuhan. No, we cannot charge them of libel, neither of oral defamation. Another, congressmen and senators who are attending or going to attend session in Congress, either for regular or special session, are given immunity from arrest or search if the crime they were charged is only punishable by prison correctional pababa, down. Okay? So, even if there is a warrant of arrest or search warrant, you cannot serve it if they are attending session in the Congress. Then you can serve it afterwards. Okay? But, if the crime committed is punishable by prison mayor pataas, that is six years and one day and above, even if they are in the session in Congress or in the Senate or House of Representatives, the lower and the upper house, they can be arrested. Just like what happened with some of our senators who are now facing charges in court. On the other hand, RA 75 speaks of extension of immunity. So if ambassador or head of states come to Philippines together with their members of the retinue o yung kanilang kasamahan sa trabaho o yung kanyang kasamahan sa bahay, yung kanyang kasamahan sa trabaho pwede rin mabigyan ng extension of immunity provided their name must be submitted to the Secretary of the Department of Foreign Affairs and the DFA must issue a certificate of immunity. Now, that is the concept of RA 75 and it is vice versa. So if we acknowledge that, so our representative to other countries should also be given an extended immunity. It's just a reciprocal recognition of law. Okay. There you are. Illustration of exemption to generality. Mr. John is a U.S. military soldier. He participated in the military exercises in the Philippines. He committed a crime of rape within the territorial jurisdiction of the military exercises. Is the Philippine criminal law applicable to him? Answer. Ideally, ideally, Applying the general rule, they, our answer must be yes, because he is in the Philippines, right? Yes, that is the general rule. But, take note, if there is an agreement or a stipulation or kasunduan between U.S. and the Philippines that military soldiers who are engaged in these exercises who committed a crime within the territory, of the military exercises will be liable to the United States if that is part of the stipulation. Therefore, kailangan irrespeto natin ang napagkasunduan. What will be our answer? Our answer will change. What does it mean? That then, he will be tried not in the Philippines but in the U.S. court because that is part of the stipulation in the treaty that is entered to into by the U.S. and the Philippines. So that's how we answer this kind of question. Okay? So if we know that there is a treaty, then we will not answer anymore yes. We will go directly to the answers that, by way of an exemption, Mr. John will not be tried in the Philippines, rather in the U.S. court, because of the agreement entered into by U.S. and the Philippines. Illustration. Ms. Ozawa is a Japanese ambassador to the Philippines. She committed, or he committed, rather, dapat she, sorry for the error, committed shoplifting at Shangri-La Mall. Is she liable under the Philippine criminal law? Again, by general rule, we might answer yes. But, looking at the scenario, 
she is an ambassador. Therefore, what will be our answer? Under the public international law, ambassadors, head of states, ministers, charges to affairs are exempted from the application of our criminal law. Therefore, our answer is we cannot charge her in the Philippine court. But we can do what we can do is refer her to the DFA for her deportation. And we might, or the DFA might, no, blacklisted her as a person or persona non grata. Next, another illustration, another illustration on the third exemption. A certain car running along Commonwealth Avenue, that is in the Philippines, no, at the speed of 100 km per hour. We know that in Commonwealth, the speed limit is only 60 km per hour. So the patrol officer chased the car, and it turns out that the congressman is boarding the car, going to attend session in Congress. Is the Philippine criminal law applicable? Again, by way of general rule, yes. But under the Philippine Constitution, Article 6, Section 20, we said that there is a parliamentary immunity. A traffic violation is just a minor offense. So therefore, we should not arrest the congressman who is about to attend session in Congress. Otherwise, the police officer arresting the congressman will be charged of violation of parliamentary immunity, which is a criminal offense under the revised penal code. Okay, so those are the exemption under the generality rule. Now, let's go on to the territoriality. Okay. In the territorial applications of the criminal law, it states simply that the criminal law is enforceable within the Philippine territory or Philippine archipelago to become specific. And that means what? Land, air, water, terrestrial, fluvial, and aerial dominion. So, whether it is a foreign ship or airship or vessel okay car or whatever if it is in the philippine territory our law shall be observed that is the general rule when it comes to territoriality okay okay po. so we know that the philippines has an extended territory because of the great water area that we have in the pacific Meron po tayong tinatawag na exclusive economic zone na yung ating 12 nautical miles na territorial sea ay extended up to 200 nautical miles provided that water territory is not yet a, ter a territorial water of another country. Again, what are the exemptions? The exemption is the same with generality. If it is covered by treaty, if it is under public international law or if it is under the law on preferential application, then we might disregard the concept of territory. But we have an extension of territory. So, hindi po ito actually more of exemption. This is more of extension. Anong ibig sabihin? Meron pong tinatawag na extra territorial jurisdiction ang ating batas. Sir, ano po yun? Ito po yung nakasaad sa Article 2 ng ating Revised Penal Code. At lima po yun. Ano po yun? Mga kaso na kahit nasa labas na ng teritoryo ng Pilipinas, maaari pa rin batas ng Pilipinas ang sundin o i-apply. Ano po itong mga ito? Una, should commit an offense while in Philippine ship or airship. So, ibig sabihin kung ang isang barko ay restrado sa Pilipinas, at ito'y nasa high seas, no? yung karagatan o ibabaw ng karagatan na hindi pag-aari ng anumang bansa. May nangyaring krimen sa barko o sa eroplano, Pilipinas pa rin ang may jurisdiction. Bakit? Dahil ang krimen ay nangyari sa loob ng registradong sasakyang pang ipapawid at pangdagat ng Pilipinas. Yun po ang ibig sabihin nun. Okay? Pero, ito'y applicable kapag ang barko ay commercial at hindi war. Kasi kung war vessel yan, kahit ito'y umabot na sa ibang teritoryo, maaari pa rin tayo ang may authority. Kasi atin yung war vessel. Ganun po ang rule sa war vessel. 
Pero pag commercial or merchant, yung ginagamit for commercial purpose or businesses, habang nasa atin, tayo ang may jurisdiction. Pag nasa high seas at atin yung barko, tayo pa rin ang may jurisdiction. Pero pag nasa ibang bansa na siya, then batas nila ang ating dapat irespeto. Yun ang paragraph 1. Paragraph 2, pagdating sa forgery or counterfeiting of money o anumang bagay na obligasyon ng Republika ng Pilipinas. Okay? Kapag yan pinaki mo, kahit sa labas ng bansa, ikaw ay mananagot sa Pilipinas dahil yan ay obligasyon ng Pilipinas. Ganon din ang paragraph 3. No? Kapag ito'y ginawa sa ibang bansa, ngunit dinala sa Pilipinas, ito'y isang obligasyon na maaaring maging pananagutan ng Pilipinas Pwede ka pa rin kasuhan kahit ikaw ay nasa ibang bansa. Paragraph 4. Kapag ikaw ay public officer, halimbawa, ikaw ay consul or ambassador ng Philippines sa ibang bansa. Okay? Nagawa ka o gumawa ka ng krimen sa ibang bansa laban sa isang Pilipino rin. Okay? Maaring hindi ka kasuhan doon sa ibang bansa, pero sa Pilipinas, ikaw ay mananagot bilang isang public officer. Dahil yung krimen... The crime that you committed is against the law of the Philippines and you are a public official. That is paragraph 4. And the last is, those crimes enumerated under the title 1 of the book 2. Ano po yun? Crimes against national security and law of nation from article 114 to article 123. Yun po yung mga crimes of treason, misprison of treason, conspiracy to commit treason, espionage, inciting to war, or making a reprisal, uh, violation of neutrality, flight to enemy country, piracy, mutiny. Okay? Those crimes are even if committed outside the Philippine jurisdiction, that can still be covered by the Philippine law. Okay. So that's territoriality. Is prospectivity. What is that? That the law must be forward and not Backward. The criminal law shall be applied to those act committed only at the time that the law was made effective. No person shall be punished for an act which at the time it was committed, there is no law punishing it. That is based on the principle of nulum crimen, nula puena sinilege. Wala pong crimen kung walang batas. So, kailangan gumawa muna tayo ng batas para ma-identify kung ano ang bawal at hindi tama. Kapatapos nun, kailangan muna siyang i-implement bago siya totally i-apply. Kailangan muna siya maging efektibo. As a matter of fact, under our law, they must be published first to the newspaper of general circulation or yung preferred is on the official gazette. Okay po. Bakit? Kasi basta ang batas ay magbibigay ng parusa, dapat itong ipinapublish for the Information, knowledge of the people. Okay. Exemption. When the law so provide, anong ibig sabihin? Pwedeng maging backward ang effect ng batas kung sinabi ng batas mismo na siya'y pwedeng backward. Pangalawa, kung ang bagong batas ay magiging pabor if it is what? Favorable to the accused who is not habitual delinquent. Okay. Illustration. Mr. A commits an act of loitering. Ano yung pagalat-kalat, pagalagala? February 4, 2019. Just March 15, 2019, a law was passed. For example, an ordinance or a national law prohibits loitering. Can we apply the law of March 15 to an act done on February 4? Definitely no. Why? For the act was done prior or before to the effectivity of the law. Dapat nauna yung batas bago yung act. That is the principle. Now, if the said law will be enforced against a, what kind of law will it be? Kung i-apply natin yung bagong batas do sa lumang act na hindi naman krimen nung kasi siya ginawa, that law will become an ex post facto law. And that ex post facto law is prohibited by the Constitution in our what? Bill of Rights. Okay? That is under the last section, section 22 of the Article 3. No ex post facto law, neither a bill of attainder shall be passed by the Congress. Okay. Next, what if February 4, 2019, the act is punished already by a law? 
with prison mayor. But March 15, 2019, ELO was passed, lowering the penalty to prison correctional. Tanong, can we apply now the new law to Mr. A? Ang sagot, one, yes, kung nakalagay sa batas na pwede siyang bigyan ng retroactive or backward effect. Or two, kung ang bagong batas ay mas pabor. As, as you can see, the new law provides for a lower penalty. So it's obviously favorable to Mr. A. Therefore, the new law may be applied to Mr. A because it is favorable. But provided, according to the provision of Article 22 of Book 1, the person can be given retroactive effect provided that he is not habitual delinquent. Hindi siya yung paulit-ulit na na nakagawa ng krimen for at least three or more times within a period of 10 years from the date of his last conviction or last release of a specific crime of serious physical injury, less serious physical injury, estapa, robbery, falsification, and theft. Or we called it by acronym SLURF under Article 62, Rule Number 5 of the Book 1. Whew. Okay, next. It is specific and definite. Why? Because different crimes have their specific elements. I think I mentioned that already. And added to that, there are crimes that are committed in different manner or mode. So we have to know the difference between what elements are and what modes or acts are. Because kapag element, dapat lahat sila ay kompleto. The absence of one may not consider that as that particular crime. Other provision might be applied. But if it is a mode or manner of commission, any one can already be considered as constituting the said crime. That's how we appreciate this concept. Okay? Kaya dapat alamin ang elements at alamin ang mode or paraan. Tulad ng murder, maraming paraan ng pagpatay that may change homicide to murder. So isa lang doon will constitute the act as a murder, not as a homicide. But when we say element, elements must be complete. The fifth, it must be uniform in applications that all acts or omissions shall be described as a crime is a crime no matter who committed it. Okay? And lastly, it must have a penal sanction wherein that's the reason why we called our law as revised penal code from the word penal, which means penalty or punishment. Because a law without penalty is not a criminal law. Okay? So this law is a form of prohibitory and mandatory law. That's why for violations of this provision, there is a punishment appropriate with certain proportionation. Okay? So yan po. Now, other details about the exemption to territorialities and other, you can refer to my lesson on criminal law proffer, which I already uploaded in my YouTube, okay? So, I think that we'll discuss the theories and the characters of the criminal law. Thank you, and see you on my next video. God bless, and keep safe.